Hey y'all, it's Laura from Watching Paint Dry. Thank you for joining me on my adventure into paint pouring. Tonight I'm reusing a canvas from a previous pour. I've just painted over it with some white paint and let it dry. I'm trying something different tonight. I've only done this one other time. Didn't turn out so well, but I'm trying again. I'm using silicone oil in my paints. It's a treadmill oil that is supposed to create the multicolored cells that I'm looking for in this type of paint pouring. I'm doing a five flip and drag cup pour. And these are five ounce cups and I'm putting two drops of oil in the fuller cups and only one drop in the cups with less paint. The only cup that does not get any oil is the white paint. I'm not squeezing the oil bottle, I'm just letting it drip into the cup. And then I'm gonna stir the oil really well into the paint. I don't want to create oil slicks on top of my painting, so I want that mixed really well. And the paints I'm using are Liquitex Basics and Arteza paints. They're what I have available to me right now. Um, my white is Artist Loft Flow White. Details will be in the description as usual. And my pouring medium is a good old mix of two-thirds Elmer glue all and one-third water. It's my favorite pouring medium these days and just about every pour. I mix it up two or three days before I want to paint because a fresh mix is very frothy and has lots of bubbles because of all the water. And it's impossible to get all the bubbles out of the paint no matter how much you torch. So I shake the glue and water up really well in a big plastic bottle that has measurements on the outside. The measurements on the outside make it easier for me to keep the recipe correct. Then I let it sit tightly sealed for a couple of days and the bubbles will dissipate. These colors are not colors I would normally use together. They are leftover paints that I wanted to use up before they go bad. And um, some of them are a couple of different colors, similar colors of paint mixed together to get enough to use in this pour. And I've tried to use one light shade and one dark shade of the same color. And I'm hoping it will work out okay. Not 100% sure, but we'll find out. Like I said, I'm gonna do a five cup flip and drag pour. So I'm gonna line up my cups and layer my paints. And I'm just gonna fast forward through the layering the paints. If you've not seen it before, I'm just alternating light and dark shades of paint in my cups. I should have enough um, paint for two layers of each of the five cups, but I decided not to use the Bordeaux red for a second layer. I'm really second guessing it, using that color to, at all to now. Now it's time to flip my cups over onto the canvas and the goal is to not to spill a bunch of paint. As you can see, I'm highly unsuccessful with this. My cups are really just too full. There's no way I can flip them without spillage, um, but it's just paint and it's gotta come out of the cup and onto the canvas anyway. So I'm not stressed about it. I've taken a paper towel and put some silicone, silicone oil on it and wiped uh, down the inside of my cups before layering the paint. This will help the paints to slide right out of the cups when I drag them across the canvas. The key to the flip and drag is to lift up the cup and drag fairly quickly down the canvas. I have some drips from the bottom of the cup that have dripped onto my paint there, but I'll tip that off so it's not going to be a problem. My second cup, I didn't drag fast enough and my paint pulled on one side of the canvas. It takes a little bit of practice, but I've only been paint pouring for a few months and, and I'm starting to catch on fairly quickly, so anybody can. And right about now, I'm wishing I had listened to that little voice in my head that was questioning the use of the Bordeaux Red. 
you see that brownish muddy looking paint all on the same side of the canvas yeah that's the bordeaux red which is normally a lovely color but is just turning to mud here i'll attempt to tip most of that off of the canvas I'm just going to use what's left in my cups to put around the corners to help the paint move over the edges of the canvas. This just helps it move a little better. Okay, now I have to decide which part to tip off first and it's a no brainer. I'm going with the muddy end. So I'm going to turn the, ca the canvas carefully around and I am going to rock the weight of the paint down the canvas to gently and carefully cover the surface. surface. And I'm trying really hard to ignore the impatient Laura within me that wants to tip the paint quickly. But by rocking the paint patiently, I will have a better chance at keeping any cells that form in a round shape and not overstretching and distorting the cells. Time to torch. I want to keep the torch fairly high, about 8 to 12 inches above the canvas and heating the paint causes the oil that's in there to rise to the top and create those multicolored cells that I'm hoping and wishing and praying for. And according to Julie Cutts from Pouring Your Heart Out, you want to cover half of your canvas before you torch the first time. This will limit overstretching the cells. And you also want to torch sparingly and in circular motions, both of which I completely forget to do. Big surprise, I get excited and forget everything that I'm supposed to do. I also wish I hadn't been so fearful of tipping off too much paint in the beginning and had committed to getting rid of more of that brownish muddy color at, on the end because I'm just really stretching, stretching it over more of the canvas instead of getting rid of it. Uh, this little experiment is not going so well tonight, but like I said, it's just paint and um, practice makes perfect. So I'm gonna keep at it and um, cover the rest of my canvas. This is also gonna help the, uh, the, gr the cells grow in size and hopefully not overstretch them. So I'm just gonna walk the paint back and forth uh, down the canvas. About now, I'm really screaming inside, for the love of God, go over the freaking corners. But I'm gonna try to be patient and come up with some way to save this painting tonight. So you see, I really just stretched that muddy brown right back over the canvas. So I'm going to try to get off as much as I can. So I think, hey, let's torch again. Maybe we'll get some cells to come up and um, distract and disguise this muddy brown color that's on the canvas. I managed to keep the torch up high this time instead of getting too close, um, but obviously it's not uh, bringing up a lot of cells. So um, I'm going to try tipping it off on the edges. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that unlike others out there in the acrylic pouring world, um, I like stripes in my paintings. But with uh, flipping drag paintings, most people like to keep the stripes. Um, of the paintings that is that are created by the separate cups when they're dragged down the canvas. 
So since most others like that, I naturally lean in the other direction. Big shocker there. So I'll tilt the paint off the ends in an effort to, um, I'm just trying to get rid of the muddy paint and attempt to stretch out the those pink and green and blue layers of paint that are sandwiched there in the middle of the canvas. Okay, tilting the ends did get rid of a lot of that muddy paint color, but now I have some really awkward shaped and colored cells in the middle of my canvas. This experiment really isn't going well, but I feel like I've come too far to scrape it. So I'm gonna torch again, try to get some other additional cells and figure out a way to fix this mess. But you know what? It's just paint. It's not heart surgery. Um, so I'm not going to let it defeat me. There's some way I'm sure I can figure out something to do with it. My, my little ray of hope and sunshine are those little bitty pink and purple and green um, cells down in the bottom left-hand corner that have, have appeared by me stretching this paint. So that gives me some hope that if there's some movement here, I might be able to... Um, get some so, something happy out of this painting and so i good news i've kind of lost the majority i've gotten rid of the majority of the the muddy muddy paint it, it obviously is all over my table and um now i'm just hoping that i can move this paint and get rid of that pac-man ghost there that's in the middle that, between the yellow and the green and then that red thing up there at the other end and um pretty much seeing that my paint really isn't moving so i don't have that much more paint so i'm cleaning up the edges and thinking what am I going to do? Do I want to scrape this? Because it's an awful lot of paint, even though it was leftover paint that I had, that was probably, you know, going to go bad in a day or two. I don't want to, I don't want to waste it. So I'm thinking, oh, I remember some people take some balloons and they s make paintings that don't look so good, make it look a lot better. So I got two different balloons. The red one is just blown up with air and the blue one has a little bit of water in it. Um, and it um, gives it a little bit more weight and so you don't have to push so hard. Um, I've done one other painting with balloon. This is a balloon kiss technique. Um, and got really good, de decent results with it. Um, a lot of people really liked it. Um, it was done like this one. There's a whole bunch of mistakes that just kept happening. And finally, I had run out of ideas. And so I thought, what can I do to make it any better? And so I'm going to take a balloon and see if... Um, Learning what I did with the other, not pushing so hard, uh, maybe doing a little twist at the end to make these uh, flower-looking um, ki balloon kisses in the, in the painting. And they look better in these paintings if you have cells. And if they're on shape cells, it's a great way because the cells then suddenly become, the cells become petals of your flowers. And so I'm just looking it over, I'm creating a place because once I dip the balloon in it, I'm going to need to wipe it off. So I've laid down a puppy pad next to me that I can wipe my balloon off of. And I'm just trying to decide where do I want to make my first balloon kiss flower petal bud creation. 
on my painting. And I will alternate between balloons, seeing which, you know, which technique, which one works better, the heavier weight of the blue balloon with the water in it or the lighter weight balloon um, that just has air in it. So I do a little twist as I'm coming up. You want to do it, you push down into it, into the paint, not too hard. You don't want to stretch out your canvas, but you push down and then you slowly lift up. And I like to do a little bit of a twist as I pull up. It kind of helps the middle um, will drip if um, you're not too careful. You don't want to be too slow, but you don't want to be too fast. And um, so it's something you, you, you practice at. But like I've said, I've only done this once before. So it doesn't take like years of practice. It's just a te technique that you, um, that you wanted to just develop and do what you like. Some people... Um, create totally different, uh, f like totally different flowers um, and looks to them. And some people like to take, have another canvas next to them. And when they push the balloon in, um, they take that balloon and then push it onto the blank canvas and create a painting um, with the balloon kisses that have been created um, from the other canvas. So it's kind of just not a waste of just wiping off paint. I don't really like these colors enough to do that, um, to create another painting with them. So I'm just really kind of using this as a technique to try to save the work that I've done. And so far, I'm not hating it. And I'm just wanting to um, hit the areas first that I don't really like in the painting. Some people like to put lots of balloon kisses all over their painting, which and they turn out really great. Um, I am of the mindset less is more, um, but it really the 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 canvas dictates uh, what needs to be done, and there's a lot of of um, less than successful cells and paint on this canvas right now, so. Let's just sit back and see what happens.
Okay, there you go. And you know what? I don't hate it. Using the balloon brought out some colors that I couldn't see there before. And I'm kind of liking it now when I didn't before a few minutes ago. So I'm hoping when it dries, it turns out great. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I appreciate you so much. And I hope you'll join me again when we watch paint dry.